Hello, oh shit. everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog and today I want to talk to you about bass and specifically about stereo bass because what I'm going to tell you today is that it is sometimes okay to make your bass stereo. This goes counter to a lot of standard mixing advice and so I want to talk you through the arguments that exist for keeping your bass mono and then let's talk about when you can make an exception. I want to show you the audio example that triggered today's video for me. Uh, full disclosure, you're going to be needing headphones for this. It's very unlikely that if you're listening to this on laptop speakers or anything else, that, I mean, the point is going to kind of get lost. So if you have headphones on, listen to this drum beat. Try to make up your mind. Where is the audio coming from? Some elements in this are mono or they come from the center and some elements are not. In fact, there are three elements playing here. There's a kick, there's a low tom, both of those are mono, and then there's a piece of low rumbly percussion, which is very off to the sides, and off to the sides in a way that is similar to a Haas effect, not to panning. So this low end has elements in the center and elements in the side, and yet the focus is still pulled forwards. So it's weird, right? Here is a very large commercial artist who is ignoring one of the first and most important mixing rules that any beginner mixer is going to get taught, aka that your bass has to be mono. But like with all rules, if you know why the rule exists, you know how to break it. So let's look at why the rule exists. I'd say generally speaking there are three reasons why. The first one is to avoid phase cancellation when your track eventually will get summed to mono for various reasons, for example you're being played in a club or whatever. If your track gets summed to mono, the left signal and the right signal will be added up with each other and if you get unlucky they will be somewhat out of phase, therefore taking away the impact of your low end. They will cancel each other out and this is one of the things that people can mean when they say you might have phase issues. And so rule number one comes with solution number one, which is that you can simply check this. You don't necessarily have phase issues because you're adding left and right together. You can just add a utility on there, hit mono and see what happens. If your musical story stays coherent, then you have no problem. If your track still has the right elements and the right amount of warmth when you sum it to mono, don't worry about it, move on, you don't have a problem. Now reason number two to keep your low end mono is a physical reason especially in dance music, if you expect that your music is at some point going to make its way onto vinyl, there are some physical reasons why mono is better. And I am certainly no expert on vinyl, so I am somehow repeating things that I've learned. I don't have first-hand experience with this. But my understanding is that if you have an out-of-phase bass, then due to the way that the physical grooves work, it is possible that the needle can be pushed out of the groove. And that's why when your tracks get mastered for vinyl, someone will take that into account and mono the low end anyway. However, rule number two comes with solution number two, which is that if your target listening audience is not necessarily uh, on vinyl, if you expect that 99% of people are going to be listening on headphones on Spotify, then maybe you actually want a little bit of stereo in your bass. At the end of the day, we are creating media here. And so when you're creating media, you just have to think about where that media is going to be consumed most of the time and what problems might arise from what you're going to do. And so once you think that through, you accept the limitations that you need to accept, but you don't need to accept the limitations of vinyl if you're never going to print something to vinyl. Then the third reason, and this is I find maybe the most compelling reason, is to keep the focus of your track, or at least of your low end, forward. So if you think of your track as having a stereo spectrum and sounds could come from the left or the right or the center, most important elements, most confident elements in your track are going to come from the center. Even if they have some stereo width, you want them to feel like they're coming from the front. And that's especially true for the low end element. It would be pretty distracting if your kick drum was completely in your left ear or completely in your right ear. We tend to pan our kick drums dead center because we don't want that, that stereo distraction. So rule number three can come with solution number three, which is that if the main focus of your track stays to be forward and whatever stereo treatment you do, you make sure that it's equally on both sides, like in the case of the Haas effect, then you get something like in the audio example. You have a kick and a tom groove in the center and then some accents that pull away for a moment, creating a little bit of tension, but then collapsing back into the center. So at the end of the day, your mind's eye doesn't go left or too far right either. Let me show you what this looks like in the DAW when we recreate this drum pattern.
All right, so here I am in the DAW and we're just looking at a two bar loop. Very simple, right? We can recreate this with a simple kick. Just a simple kick and then we're gonna add a tom groove to that. And first of all, I wanna add a tom that is mono. You can see that tom right here. This is mono. Everything perfectly in the center. Okay, so now we're gonna add in the second one right here. This little, this little extra tom could be mono. Now it's in the center. But instead, I add in little, oops, sorry. But instead I add in little micro shift. Little micro shift is a, a plugin that uses uh, both detuning and time-based um, offsets to create stereo width. So without it, it sounds perfectly mono and in the center. Again, you're gonna need headphones for this. And now it's wide. And in a way, I kind of see this as a little cycle of tension and release. If everything is in the center, there's no tension. And then when you make things wide, you add in tension and then you release back down. And so this groove, it kind of has this, this stereo pulsation in it that is very interesting. And uh, if you would have just purely followed the rules naively, you would have never found it. So now, if we're worried about mono compatibility, the only thing you have to do here on the toms rack, put a utility on there and test in mono if it still sounds good. And to me, it does. The groove stays intact, the warmth stays intact, and that's it. That's all I need from a low-end element. So there's not going to be a huge problem when you sum this to mono in any situation. So imagine then that this is made for Spotify, but then if eventually it does get mastered for vinyl. Well, the vinyl engineer will just mono your low-end, and then that's okay. It's just something you accept. But for most listeners who are going to listen to this on streaming platforms, Spotify, on their headphones, etc., you're going to have this lush, modern, touch this detail that shows that you have perfect mastery over your stereo spectrum. So in summary, if you keep the storytelling focus of your track forward, make sure you do this to a secondary element, not to a main element like the kick. If your target audience is listening on headphones, and if your track still sounds cool when you mono it, then by all means add in a stereo sub bass hit. It can only make things more interesting. Remember that making music is an art form where all rules are meant to be broken once you understand what those rules are for. And now hopefully you understand a little bit more about why people recommend to mono your bass and why you can sometimes break that rule if you want. If you like the outro track, go follow my project to face the sun on SoundCloud. Come show us on the Discord channel what you did with this. If you're an absolute beginner looking to learn in a structured context, follow my foundations in my course. And until next time, stay producing, be good to one another, and take care. Bye-bye.